<laughs> you are persistent. I cannot allow us to be killed. We are going to finish the job we started. So the guy that I hear a number of people saying mimics Tom Hardy is hitting this summer real hard with his latest film, Upgrade. But how was it? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Upgrade. I really do appreciate it. So a couple of months ago when I saw the trailer for this movie Upgrade, I was blown away. I didn't see the Green Brand trailer, I saw the Red Brand trailer. Anytime there's a Red Brand trailer released for any film that I'm interested in, I'm always going to choose that over the Green Brand trailer because I want my expectations and my first impressions to be a good one. And my first impressions was great. I was on board with this film. You can go check out my reaction to it. I strongly suggest you do. But I was oohing and aahing in my seat, jumping up and down. Just not, could not believe all the crazy action and choreography that was going on in this film. I mean, this was right up my alley. My expectations were through the roof, like I said, and I just could not wait to see it. Now, <clears throat> this movie is being directed, uh, written and directed by Lei Wanao. And it's funny when I looked up his picture uh, just now, uh, you know, just to take some notes. And I actually saw this film about three or four weeks ago, but the embargo was this week. And they had a question and answer segment afterwards. And he just doesn't look like the guy that was in the picture that I saw. Um, I mean, I didn't go up and shake his hand during the q and I was kind of in the, in the you know, back middle. But they just kind of threw me for a loop. But if you know Lei Wanel, um, he's pretty popular a writer. Uh, he's done more writing than directing. This is only his second film that he's directed. The first one was Insidious Chapter 3. Um, and he's also been part of the writing team for the Saw franchise, uh, which came out with the first one in 2004. And I think they're even trying to make it eighth one, which, you know, they made the Jigsaw movie last year. So um, I, I, I brought his name up just to say, um, that I think that he is a decent writer because at least the first three Saw films I'm a fan of, I think those are pretty quality films for the most part, especially the writing with all the intricacies that goes on with there. So if you're a fan of him, you're going to, you know, he's part of the upgrade and this will make you satisfied. But in the intro of this review, <clears throat> Excuse me. In the intro of this review, I was saying that, hey, you know, the guy that a lot of people say reminds them of Tom Hardy, that's Logan Marshall Green. And if you look at the two, he does kind of look like a uh, younger version or or um, I, I hate to use this term or just like a watered down version of Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is great, but at the same time, I'm going to separate the two. You know, he has nothing to do with Tom Hardy. He's his own great thing. And as far as an actor is concerned. And I have a lot of respect for him, especially after watching this film here. Uh, past films that he's been in, I think he popped up on the scene for me, which was in 2012 with Prometheus. Um, he also did Devil in 2010. Uh, I saw that film in theaters as well. I remember I took a, a date to go see that. We had a good time. Uh, he was also in Spider-Man Homecoming and also Snowden that came out last year. And, um, you know, he he's the main character of the film. Um, his name is uh, his name in the film is Gray. And um, I don't know. It's just kind of fitting. I like Gray as his name. And I also just like it kind of just tying in with something else that I like that I'm jumping around here that has to do with the cinematography and <clears throat> which is freaking fantastic in this film. It really did set the tone and get you in the mood of this um, this futuristic type world that they're living in where technology is just becoming more and more prominent, even more today. I mean, we think that we're slaves of technology today. Wait till you see this movie. Um, it, it, some of it is quite scary, but at the same time, um, it is very intriguing because you're like, man, I wonder when we're going to have this type of device or that type of device. So that's just something that I liked about the movie. But going back to Logan Marshall Green and his character, uh, Gray, for some reason, just hearing his name Gray and with the cinematography. And I know this kind of gets thrown around a lot with this kind of like a gritty, realistic tone. Um, that's just kind of the tone I got. So when I hear gritty and realistic, one of the colors that pops in my mind is black and gray. And so to hear his name being called Gray in the movie, I don't know. They just done something. They just kind of did something for me. Uh, kind of put a smile on my face and just kind of like, you know, entrench me, you know, into the film already than I was before. Now, as far as like 
I mean, a lot of people are going to want to go see this film is because of the action and all that good stuff that you see in the trailers and, you know, all the viciousness and, you know, how visceral and just, you know, high intense this film is. And I'll get to that in a second. But what impressed me the most was the character development between Gray's character, because you really do get to know him very early on in the film. You know, he's a married man. Uh, this is a revenge plot. You know, in the trailers that his wife was murdered and he's trying to get revenge, but he really does love his wife. And what stood out to me is they didn't necessarily make this a point in the movie. I kind of just filled in the blanks myself and kind of read between the lines. But I think that his wife made more money than he did or his wife is the one that wore the pants. Well, no, I don't. I, I take the pants. I don't want to say she wore the pants, but I just say I, I for some reason I got the sense that she was the breadwinner. She was the bread maker in this film. Now, uh, in today's world, uh, well, not necessarily today, in the past, you know, they would really get to a lot of male egos. Like, oh, my God, you know, my my wife makes more than me or women can't make more than men or, you know, women are weak and men are strong and blah, 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 all that stupid stuff. But well, what I really did like about this in this film, his character, Gray, Logan Marshall Green, is if that was the case, it really didn't seem like that was a problem for him. It just really seemed like he was happy with the life that he had. He had a, a loving wife that loved him they kind of joked around in a way that most couples or married people won't uh but you know you do whatever works for you in your relationship screw what everybody else says and that's just kind of like you know how i took it i mean he really does love his wife he doesn't let the fact that she makes more money than him or she's the one that's working and he's the one to stay at home bother him he's just a humble person that's really appreciative of everything that he has whether it's a material thing a, a, a metaphorical thing or, or a sentimental thing or, or whatever. And that's just kind of like really humanized his character and got me on board with him. And like when the crap hits the fan and his wife is murdered and, you know, he becomes a per, is it a per, it's a, a quadriplegic because he can't uh, move his arms and legs. I mean, he's really like a vegetable in, the, in a sense. You know, you already cared about his character and then you care about his character even more, you know, when he's bedridden and he can't move. I mean, he's like freaking paralyzed, you know, and it's just like really sad. And the film spent a good amount of time there just like, no, you're going to wait for this action. I'm going to make sure you, you know, you earn it. You know, you're going to have to deserve this action and the way to deserve it is you got to get, you got to get to know Logan Marshall's green character. And you have to understand where it's coming from and you just have to let that just seep in. And they did that with a lot of long shots, a great score, you know, with the music in the background. It's like, man, you know, the situation, it's, it's just not like, you know, uh, I mean, you felt sorry for John Wick when his dog died or whatever. And, you know, there was this like a really short period of, um, uh, of um uh, not not remorse the, i'm sorry guys the the word is slipping you know but in that movie john wick there was just a really really short time for him just to take in what happened before you know he's breaking out his old weapons going through about with a plan about to wreck shop you no know, you really did get to see you know him uh, in this movie upgrade logan marshall's green character gray just really you know take in the tragedy that they had to go through you know with him losing his wife and him having to cope that not only did he lose his wife i mean the guy can't even you know move around even if he wanted even even if he had all the resources in the world uh, to help him seek revenge, he can't even do that. So, you know, that's just something that really just stood out to me there. Now, uh, like you guys, you, you you fell in love with the character. And so when um, the nefarious character comes through, like, you know, hey, Gray, I have this device here called STEM. It can take you over and do this and do that. You know, um, the guy playing that role. Um, I did not like him at first. I, I, he was extremely weird. He was very slimy. Um, I think I don't even, I don't even remember his name. I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a picture right now on IMDb. I don't think that's it, but I wasn't really feeling the villain or the nefarious character at first. He was just like really creepy to me. And I'm just like, dude, you have no social skills at all. But at the same time, I checked myself and I was like, Brandon, I mean, most geniuses and just super rich people and all that good stuff. They don't have a, a hold of reality like everybody else does. They are socially awkward. So I was kind of like, well, that kind of does fit within, you know, uh, 
um, you know, the two contexts of the world, you know, how they put it in their film. So I, I, I uh, eventually was able to accept it. But of course, you guys want to know how the action is. OK, even if you saw the Red Band trailer um, for this movie, the trailers don't do any justice. Like the trailers are good, but the action in this movie is like twice as better than it was in the trailer. Even the tra even if you like watch the trailer like five times in a row and you're like, ooh, and all and like, oh, my God, that was great. Yada, yada, yada. If when you see the it's like, you know, that's the the red band version of the trailer of the red band trailer versions of this movie is still like the watered down version of what they have in the movie. I was like still blown away at, of a lot of scenes in this movie and the way that it's just choreographed. It is just so freaking clean and, and just precise. You know, there is like no wasted movement in this martial arts or whatever. And I like ate up every uh, second of it. I was on and on in the screen, you know, the guy to my right, this woman to my left, because we saw this at a, what was it, the, um, not a studio, movie grill, uh, Alamo Draft House is where, where we saw it at. Everybody in the freaking theater was screaming like, oh, shit, oh, snap, sorry, you know, oh my God, like, oh, 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 like, seriously, just like, oh, oh, man, oh, oh my God, I mean, like, it was li like really, 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 really violent. And, you know, I, I kind of like that because the person, the the um, the device that is taking over Gray's body, it is a computerized, like robotic type of thing. So it's not human. It doesn't have, you know, you know, decency of human life or whatever. I mean, even if. I mean, if you're, you know, doing self-defense or whatever, and you're trying to kill somebody, yeah, you're going to, I mean, you're doing self-defense and you kill somebody, yeah, you're probably going to do what you have to do to put them down. But at the same time, you're not going to stomp, if the person is dead, you're not going to, like, stomp their head in the ground repeatedly or whatever. And now, I'm not necessarily saying that Stem did that in this movie, but he has that mindset. I'm just like, dude, was that really necessary? I mean, you won the fight. Did you really have to rip the guy's head off? No, no one's head got ripped off in this movie. I'm not gonna spoil a particular death for you here but i was just like freaking blown away um the action just was freaking insane and like i cannot wait to see this again or buy this movie just you know because of the action alone and let's just go to the title of the movie upgrade that has more than one meaning of this in this movie i don't necessarily i'm not, this is not I, i'm this is not a spoiler but the when they say upgrade Yes, Gray was upgraded, but upgrade is kind of like a race of new people. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of like half, half uh, machine, half human or whatever. And there's different types of upgrades. You know, uh, Gray has this type of upgrade, but another person has an upgrade to where, you know, they have a gun installed in their arm or whatever. And they can load like shotgun shells in their hand and go around and blasting you like this or someone else may have an upgrade where they have like computerized eyes so they can like see something super duper well and process information very fast it's crazy all the techno technological advances they have in this movie so some of them do seem realistic some of them seem extremely far-fetched but it does scare me but also keep me intrigued for the future you know so when the film can kind of do all of that in like less than an hour and a half i think this came in like an hour and 31 minutes you know i just got to give us some kudos there um i also like the relationship that uh, gray had with his mother um it was really good and i felt very very sorry for the mother at the very end um there was this one shot of her to where she was emoting about something and i actually said to myself damn you know it's like I, i'm not saying that i cried or anything like that but you know i really I, i'm not a woman so i can't ever be a mother and imagine what mothers go through when they want to, you know, dealing with their children. But for this one moment, not only could I sympathize with her, I could empathize with her as well. And I'm just like, man, you know, this just really, really sucks. Um, <clears throat> there is a twist towards the end. Before I hit record on this camera, I was like, Brandon, are you going to bring up the twist? Because you went in not knowing that it was going to be a twist. So shouldn't everybody else? Well, maybe. But at the same time, I think you should be prepared for it. You won't see it coming. And um, it was somewhat shocking. And I, I actually said, you know, damn again, you know, for the second. No, I said damn when the twist came. And I said damn again for the second time when I saw something. Uh, I saw something with the mother uh, towards the end of the film. And uh, 
it ended in a way I did not see coming. Um, it raised, it answered some questions, but also raised more, which is a bad thing. And that's one of my knocks about the film. When the twist came around, I kind of sat back and was like, oh, okay, I see this now and I see it again. And now that I know this, I can't wait to watch it again because I know this information. However, I think there are some plot holes uh, that revealed itself when the uh, twist came about to where I was kind of asking myself, okay, if this is how everything is really going down, was all this other stuff over here really necessary? And I don't think that it was. Um, my only other gripe in the film was that there was a few times to where it did get a, you know, just kind of dip down in the boredom area, maybe for about a minute or two before things picked up. Uh, but for the most part, this is a very smooth flowing entertaining film that is just high intensity violence excuse me and has some hand to hand choreography this one scene towards the end that is dang near competing with the raid and the raid redemption those Indonesian films that came out a few years ago um, but I really did enjoy it and I think you will too if I have to rate upgrade out of a 1 out of 10 I will get it. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 yes an 8 out of 10 but guys in the end you know I said all that but it's really just my opinion, okay? What did you think about Upgrade or have you seen it yet? Or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. You can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff down in the description box below. And guys, again, thank you so much for helping me reach 5,000 subscribers. Please share this video as much as you can. Let's help me get to 10,000 subscribers and then next 100,000 and then 1 million. But before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Keith Avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.